Hey FTC teams, we're Team U-Force 23400 from the United Arab Emirates and we're here to talk about vision with limelight for into the deep season. So according to us, vision is extremely important in this season for, an, uh, uh, for a consistent and accurate robot at all times. So let's dive into the details. First off, make sure you're using the correct model, 3A. Um, other models like 3 and 3G are all for FRC, not FTC. To, to start off, uh, plug the USB-C to A cable provided in both the limelight and uh, your device. When the limelight initializes, you should see a green and an orange LED. Mm -hmm. Now head to the limelight website. Go to the limelight documentation and scroll down on the right side. At the bottom, go to downloads and download the limelight hardware manager 1.5. It should be at the very top or the first link on the page. So now that we already have the Limelight uh, Manager open, we'll just go ahead and open it up. So what you need to do first is click on Find Limelights. This basically detects the limelights uh, that are connected to this device. Then we had to open Web UI. So currently our button isn't working, so you can just go to this IP address just in case it doesn't work. So now here we are. Um, we'll just enter that once again and there we have the vision coming in so we'll start by setting up color detection uh, press ignore uh, network tables index and select pipeline one as we already already have this set on neural detection we'll select pipeline two uh, now make sure the source is set to color and retro uh, reflective and camera. Different pipeline can be used for different phases of the mission or to detect different objects or colors. Now set the resolution to 640 by 480 and 90 frames per second. This is a good balance of high, F of high FPS and resolution. Then in advanced settings, adjust exposure so your target element is clearly visible. Sensor gain around 6 works well. Keep the black level offset low and red and blue balance at default. Okay, so now let's uh, move on to detecting something. So for example, if you're uh, trying to detect a yellow sample from, uh, from the submersible, uh, you have to first place the camera in front of, uh, you have to place the camera in front of the yellow sample, and then you have to go to the eyedropper uh, section, and then basically uh, click on the sample to get the color values, the hues, the saturation, and uh, you should basically adjust the exposure until you're able to detect the sample properly. So if it doesn't work after adjusting the exposure still, then you can uh, adjust uh, the hues and saturation manually so that it detects uh, the sample properly. So we'll just adjust that here real quickly. As you can see right now, it's still flickering a bit. It's not able to detect it properly. So we're manually adjusting the hues. You can see it's somewhat detecting it. So let's go for a top angle. And now do eyedropper. an eyedropper once again. Now we can adjust the exposure. Uh, usually exposure should be as limited as much as possible. So we can, we should set it about somewhere in s uh, the 600 ranges. Uh, and w once you adjust the exposure once uh, again, then you have to do the eyedropper again. So, yeah. Pro tip, if you're tracking red elements like the alliance markers, enable the invert H or track, uh, or in threshold, uh, thresholding since red is split across a huge spectrum. All right, now on to something advanced, neural networks. These are super and incredibly helpful for recognizing objects by shape or texture, not just color. Perfect for a game like Into the Deep where lighting and colors can vary a lot. Okay, so, uh, so at this point, you're supposed to go to roboflow.com. Uh, and you're supposed to create a public object detection project. So over here, you can uh, obviously first you'll have to take 10 to 20 pictures of each colored sample, and then you can upload it onto RoboFlow. So uh, you can use the polygon tool to adjust uh, the detection, uh, uh, 
you can adjust the detection and uh, the size of the sample uh, to be detected on uh, using the polygon tool uh, for each image. Uh, once your data set is ready, download it as a TensorFlow TF record and upload it to Google Drive. We will be using a pre-made data set from Cuttlefish, which has proven to be 90% accurate. It will be attached below the video. F feel free to use this data set for yourself as well. Now, to access this data set, we will be going to the GitHub page. So, so we already have this in our history before. Um, yeah, so here now that we download, have it open. Yeah, here we can download the different files that we'll need for this project, which is the TF, li uh, TF Lite file and the TXT mm -hmm. file. To deploy it, first set your pipeline type to neural networks. So first we'll uh, select a new pipeline, so let's mm -hmm. say pipeline 4 in this case, then then you have to go into input and select neural, neural network. networks. Right. Detector. Mm -hmm. Sorry, detector. Yes. Okay. Now, yeah. uh, we go over to configurator and we attach the TF Lite model file. Mm -hmm. And the text file. And we'll add the TXT file and the as well. TXT file. So, we'll download it here quickly. <laughs> Why is it called text? Alright, All right. so once everything's uploaded, we can go for adjusting our settings. Uh, but before that, we need to change the detector runtime from Coral to CPU. This is because Coral, uh, Google Coral is not supported or FTC legal, that's why we must go for the CPU option, which is FTC legal. And here we'll need to adjust it to allow the sample to be detected. So first we'll increase the exposure. And as you can see it is detecting some samples. But, but it's not here, properly detecting it, so we yeah. have to adjust a few settings. Now if we reduce the confidence level, it'll be able to detect the samples better. Right. Right, uh, yeah. So, so now that's that is detecting the samples better. Let's go for a top view once again. I think it works better that way. So as you can see currently, it's still a bit uh, inaccurate. So all you have to keep doing is adjusting the confidence threshold and the exposure. So uh, what uh, the model has been trained to for high exposure levels because in competition situations, there's usually high exposure. So uh, it's trained in that case. So let's increase the exposure once again and let's see if it works a bit better. Then I think we'll have to adjust confidence threshold once again. Um, maybe a bit more. Just a little bit more. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's good enough. So, as you can see, you get ap approximately 91% of accuracy, mm -hmm. and uh, that's pretty good, uh, especially uh, when you're using vision for your teleop or autonomous codes. So let's move on to the summary. Mm -hmm. So to summarize, this tutorial has taught you how to number one, set up your Limelight 3 a hardware and software for FTC. Number two, configure color detection pipelines for different game elements. Number three, optimize your camera settings for resolution, exposure, and sensor gain. Number four, use the eyedropper tool and threshold adjustments to fine tune color tracking. And lastly, set up and use neural network detection pipeline. So we hope this tutorial really gives you an edge into, into the deep season and whatever rest of the off season uh, uh, competitions you're going to go for and good luck uh, and we hope you found this tutorial helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or want to share your setups, feel free to drop by in the comments or reach out to us in this, on our discords. Uh, we'd love to see what you're building. Good luck teams, we'll catch you into the deep.